Anyway, Katrina, uh, for people who uh, don't know who you are, and I don't know who that would be, but <laughs> of course you are uh, double gold medals in the Olympics, many world championships, many sprint championships, Order of Canada, Canada Sport Hall of Fame, uh, and I think after Salt Lake, I think, didn't they call you the fastest woman on skates, if yes. I remember? <laughs> yes, they did. A great, a great uh, career that you've had. You've been incredibly successful, but you weren't always cr incredibly successful. So how did you, I mean, I think in Lillehammer, you were anticipating some pretty good stuff, weren't you? Yes, I was hoping in Lillehammer for a medal and uh, ranked fifth in the world, so realistic. Yeah. And I had won medals at World Cup, so um, you, you sort of expect your best yeah. result for the few seconds that you've trained for, for years and years. So, yes, it was uh, very difficult uh, to deal with something like that. So and definitely not a highlight. Did you call, would you call that a failure? And if you did, how did yes, you deal with it? Yes. Um, how did I deal with it? In certain ways, not very well. You understand that your family doesn't walk away from you. You understand <laughs> that people, and I, I think I got a lot from kids, is that you are still an Olympian. And you forget about that. Okay. Being at the games is a huge accomplishment. Gotcha. So did that, or how did that, mm -hmm. what I'll quote failure, mm -hmm. impact your skate in, in Nagano in 98 and then in Salt Lake in 02? Or was it, was it a factor? It was. Uh, you have in the back of your head, oh my goodness, I don't want this to happen again. Yeah. Um, and you understand, you start to understand that there are so many variables. There are things out of your control. It wasn't that I stepped on a block. It wasn't that I made a mistake that I would fix. My skate slipped out underneath me, ice broke, whatever it was, those things happen. That's why we watch sport, because there are no guarantees for anybody. But I do think it changed my perspective. I understood that people would not walk away from me. Um, I had to figure out a little bit of who I was and why I was skating yeah. versus was I only there for a medal. I was reading um, Malcolm Gladwell's book a while ago, Outliers, mm -hmm. and in there he had done some research, in his case with, with elite musicians, to find out what made them elite. Anyway, the conclusion that he drew is that these top, top people are not gifted. Mm -hmm. um, are you or were you gifted or is it about, as he says in the book, it's about the 10,000 hours you put in to master something? Well, it has to be about the 10,000 hours. I mean, speed skating is very technical. Um, you can do all the training. You have to then figure out how to transition that into 37 seconds of perfection. And it can never be, it will never be perfect. You try to make it perfect. So it's about, it's about the training. It's about whether you consider it a gift or whether you consider discipline, are you so disciplined? Is that a gift? Um, is it my stubbornness? <laughs> is, it my, uh, is it my pursuit of perfection? I wonder, though, if, if intuitively when I see that you're better than me, I think, well, she's gifted. See, that's where I'm thinking. Sometimes we take on a victim mentality that says, well, I can't do as well as her because she's gifted. And that's where I'm wondering, is that true or is it really in life more about I just need to apply myself? I believe everybody is gifted in, in certain things, okay. but we often want a gift that we don't have. Tell me a bit about the characteristics of success. Um, for an athlete, obviously being selfish, mm -hmm. it's just part of the deal. Uh, you've mentioned that you're a stubborn person. <laughs> I mean, are those traits of success or they just happen to be your traits? I think they're traits of success, but I also think that I'm seeing now team sport and individual sport, I believe, are a bit different. Mm. Take an individual athlete at an Olympic level and you have one chance for a few seconds every four years, there is no room for error. When you stand on the line, you can say I'm as good as I could be. And you don't have any regrets, because to me, regrets is the worst thing possible. Right? It's, you don't want to ever live that way. So I think very often people, but not just in sport, in business too, and in various industries, people are perfectionists. But as I said, it's a very, 
very difficult way to be because you are never completely satisfied. There's never a perfect race. There's never a perfect performance. Um, there's never a perfect leader. So you will always see what you have done wrong and try to make it better. You spent the best part of your life then as an athlete, as a skater, and then a day came, as it does for us all, where you have to ask yourself, now what? Mm -hmm. uh, farmers do that too, right? They're a farmer their whole life. That's their total identity. They don't know how to be anything else. Not all of them, but many of them can be that way. How did you approach the what now question? Well, I had to come to the understanding that it wasn't my identity. It was what I did. It wasn't who I was. So very difficult thing to do, but you have to be able to distance yourself from that. It never takes away what you did, but it cannot be who you are. It was coming so quickly and going so smoothly that in a way I had to take a step back and say, well, what's next and, and what's important? Final question for you. Some people say that success is the hardest thing to handle just because of expectation that comes with that. Uh, how did you handle reaching your goal and then staying on top? It's all your perspective of success. But when I look at my success in those races, yes, it was great. But a lot of the stuff that comes with it, that has been very difficult. It's been wonderful, great opportunities, but it's also been very difficult because people, it's a little bit of expectations. People expect you to be successful at everything you do and everything you touch and you should be perfect. So then when people realize you're not perfect, you start to understand you're not perfect. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, you know, it's a little bit of, again, how do you view success? So you know, it's always a little bit of the good and a little bit of the bad. And I think we need to st take a step back and uh, really think about what does success mean. Right. It's been fun. Thanks for talking with me. My pleasure. Thank you.